Can you imagine Adolf Hitler and Winston Churchill sitting down to dinner together, chatting over coffee and dessert, putting the world to rights? Well, it's not as far-fetched as it may seem, for Hitler and Churchill actually had a dinner date planned where this exact scenario was to have been played out. And whose idea was it? Well, it was Churchill's. The dinner that almost was nearly happened on the 30th of August 1932 in Munich, the spiritual home of the Nazi movement. At that time, Hitler was the 43-year-old leader of Germany's largest political party and was clearly the most prominent person in Germany at that time, already on the path to absolute power six months later in January 1933. Winston Churchill was 57 years old, a member of parliament and a former government minister, as well as a celebrated war hero, journalist and author. He was in his wilderness years between holding high office and would eventually become British Prime Minister in May 1940. Churchill was using his time out of office productively and had embarked on a biography of his illustrious ancestor, John Churchill, the first Duke of Marlborough, travelling to Germany to the battlefields where Marlborough had made his name and the Churchill family fortune. He was accompanied by his wife, his son Randolph, daughter Sarah and Frederick Lindemann, a friend and academic advisor. Following a visit to the battlefield at Blenheim, site of John Churchill's great victory, Churchill's party had driven to Munich, taking rooms at the Hotel Continental, though he mistakenly wrote that he stayed at the Regina Hotel. Churchill wanted to meet Hitler, wanted to understand him, gauge him, and get to know him, and his son Randolph reached out to Hitler's press secretary, Ernst Hampfstengel, to request a dinner meeting. Hauptstengel arrived in Munich that day by plane with Hitler and his party to find Randolph Spencer Churchill's message waiting for him. Hauptstengel informed Hitler. Educated at Harvard University, Hauptstengel knew that Churchill was a big deal and advised Hitler to accompany him to the dinner. But Hitler was reluctant, saying, quote, What on earth would I talk to him about? They say he is a rabid Francophile. What part does Churchill play? He is in opposition, and no one pays any attention to him. Hofstangel replied, People say the same about you, mein Fuhrer. Hofstangel managed to wring some kind of agreement that Hitler would instead join Churchill for after dinner coffee, and Hofstangel went to the dinner alone. Churchill probed Hofstangel regarding Hitler and offered the Fuhrer some advice. Quote, Tell your boss from me that anti-Semitism may be a good starter, but it is a bad sticker. End quote. He also asked, surprisingly, in view of later historical events, the following: quote, What does your chief feel about an alliance between your country, France, and England? End quote. Temporarily excusing himself from the table, Hauptstangel rushed to Hitler's apartment, finding the Führer in the entrance hall, saying goodbye to a Dutchman. Quote, Herr Hitler, don't you realize the Churchills are sitting in the restaurant? They're expecting you for coffee and will think this is a deliberate insult. End quote. Hitler replied that he needed a shave and had too much to do. Hauptstangel, however, stuck to his guns and insisted that Hitler come anyway, which Hitler seemingly agreed to do. Returning to the restaurant alone, Hauptstangel was embarrassed when Hitler still did not turn up. Thus, Hitler lost his only chance of meeting me, wrote Churchill later. Churchill did not seem particularly put out by Hitler's snubbing him, and three years later wrote glowingly of Hitler and the Nazis, comments not often discussed by historians today for obvious reasons. In the book Great Contemporaries, published in 1935, two years after Hitler had come to power, Churchill wrote admiringly of Hitler, quote, The courage, the perseverance and the vital force which enabled him to overcome all the resistances which barred his path. Those who have met Herr Hitler face to face have found a highly competent, cool, well-informed functionary, with an agreeable manner, a disarming smile, and few have been unaffected by a subtle personal magnetism." End quote. Hitler and the Nazis had shown, quote, their patriotic ardor and love of country, end quote. For his part, Hitler did not return these fulsome compliments regarding Churchill. 
Some years earlier, Churchill had been effusive in his praise of another European dictator, Italy's Benito Mussolini. Churchill and Mussolini had met in Rome in January 1927, five years after Mussolini came to power, when Churchill was British Chancellor of the Exchequer, the UK's finance minister. Of Mussolini, Churchill wrote, quote, If I had been an Italian, I am sure I should have been wholeheartedly with you from the start to finish in your triumphant struggle against the bestial appetites and passions of Leninism. But in England, we have not yet had to face this danger in the same deadly form. End quote. Perhaps Churchill's comment to Hauptstangel in 1932 concerning Hitler's feelings about an alliance with France and Britain was really about fighting the spread of Soviet communism, a subject that was very popular amongst Churchill's aristocratic milieu. And he would make several such comments supportive of both Hitler and Mussolini's anti-communism before the war. Naturally, these comments are now normally sidelined today, as they challenge the image of Churchill as the great war leader and committed ally of Uncle Joe Stalin. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.